Derek Dora and today I want to talk about INFP personality type and proper emotional management, dealing with mood swings, dealing with anxiety and dealing with stress as an INFP personality type. Now what I've found is that a lot of people advocate emotional management strategies that are directly harmful to the INFP personality type. Now, the thing I want you to remember as an INFP is nobody can tell you how to feel in a situation. Only you can tell yourself how you feel in a situation. Nobody can tell you your feelings are stupid or you shouldn't feel that way or oh, no, that's not true at all. You know, nobody thinks that way. While they might mean well, while they might be trying to help, you have to tell them it's important for me to have my emotional process. It's important for me because emotions are an important part of who I am and I feel the way I feel. And uh, if I can let myself feel the way I feel and if I can process this and introspect on this and think about this and deal with this my own way, I will feel happier, healthier, and I will have more flow and I will be smarter and more intelligent than I would be if I listened to your advice. And now, okay, what I think and what I've found is that uh, INFPs, like all personality types, have their own unique set of uh, stressors, their own unique things that give them anxiety, their own unique things that give them peace of mind and happiness. And so in this video, I want to tune in on your unique way to flow and your unique way to happiness as an INFP personality type. So what I've come to learn is that INFPs have four key things that they need to be looking for in their life. And these four things will give you courage, they will give you pride in yourself, they will give you peace of mind, and they will give you joy. So these four things, they are integral fuels or core parts of your personality type that you need to work with and engage in to feel at your best. When you're not at your best, often the reason is because your four most core values have been shaken, the four most important things to you as an INFP have been repressed. So to get started, the four things I'm talking about are introverted intuition, intuitive perceiving, feeling perceiving, and introverted feeling. Those four things are the most integral to you as an INFP. Introverted intuition best corresponds to your need for privacy and for originality. You need to have your own peace of mind, your own inner world, your own thoughts, your own ideas, unique independent of what other people think, independent of what society says, independent of what reality around you hints at. So as an INFP, what you need to be looking for is introverted intuition. You need to be taking your time for yourself. You need to be telling yourself, I need a moment, I need to go by myself, I need to find my own seat, I need to fi find my own place, I need to sit down, I need to write, I need to think, I need to process, I need to philosophize, I need to ask myself some questions. I need to go into myself, I need to think about the world, I need to reason, I need to form my own opinion. Okay, no matter what the teacher tells me the answer is, no matter what my family tells me I should do, I need to go into myself and explain to myself what do I think I want to do. And internalization is the best method to deal with anxiety. Often, the more anxious we are, the more sensitive we are to feedback from the world around us. The more the external world shapes our reality, our behavior, and our actions. Or at least, the more anxious we feel, the more threatened we feel by the external world. So when an INFP goes into this state where they feel the world is trying to push itself on us, or push itself on you and your personal situation, as an ESFP, as an INFP, sorry, what tends to happen is uh, you find yourself ghosting other people, distancing yourself from other people, detaching yourself from other people. The more pressured you feel to be on and to be in the world and to be where things are and to just take the world at face value, the more you feel a need to reclaim your own privacy and to take time for yourself. And that can create these loops where you go up and down, where you're f hyper attentive and then hyper inattentive and detached and distanced and then hyper attentive once again. So what you're looking for is an honest and healthy way to be yourself in this. Find and go into introverted intuition because introverted intuition is your primary source of joy and energy. The more you engage in introverted intuition, the more energy you get, the more interested you become in the world, the more interested you become in life the more motivation or the more energy 
you feel when you think and uh, when you think about the world and what you want to do and where you want to go and what you could do next. So introvert intuition, it gives you this sense of rush of, oh, I want to go there and I want to see that and that would be really interesting and maybe that could be true. And what if this theory is real and what if I go here? What if this inner world or this thing I've been designing, this concept I've been working on turns out to be something really fascinating I could test in the world around me. So moving from introvert and intuition into feeling perceiving. Feeling perceiving is the key source of pride in the INFP personality type. So what this means is the more you engage in feeling perceiving, the more proud you feel of yourself, the more good you feel about yourself, the more good you feel about the things you do. So Feeling perceiving most directly translates to authenticity and being natural about something, doing something your own way, doing something the way you feel you want to do it, engaging in something and processing it uh, in a way that feels authentic and real and true to your feelings and how you experience things and what you want and what you like and what you dislike and your values overall. So feeling perceiving is a nuanced reflection of your values and your situation, your interest, who you are, your identity. It is that search for things that you feel are you and that are true to you. So the more you engage in feeling and perceiving, the more proud you feel of yourself. Often when you meet INFPs that are very proud of themselves, often what you also recognize is they are deeply authentic people. They are very much naturalists. They are people that do things just the way they feel, just based on gut feeling. And that's a power, that's a source of power and energy for an INFP personality type. The most gifted and most intelligent INFPs we meet are usually the people that have the strongest uh, ability to tap into themselves and their own feelings and to express and speak out and say what they are feeling honestly honesty is so important for INFPs speaking and sharing your feelings honestly saying what you what's on your mind dressing the way you want to dress being the way you want to be that's feeling perceiving for you and that's how you know when INFP is proud when they can dress and express themselves truly the way they are so Courage is another important factor of the INFP personality type and courage comes from intuition and perceiving. So to maintain courage as an INFP, what you're looking for is intuition and perceiving. You're looking to look at the world with nuance. You're looking for variation. You're looking at different options, variables, different ways. You're thinking about the world tactically. You're thinking about the world from the perspective of what could happen next, what could change, what could go on now. What, what if this comes to be? What if this possibility? What if this option? You go through what ifs, you think about and you anticipate the world and you rightfully predict what's going to happen next. You also find yourself and what you thought coming true. You notice that what you thought the person was going to say, they actually said it. You notice that what you thought would happen actually ended up happening. So NP, NP the intuitive and perceiving process gives an INFP courage. The introvert in a feeling process gives an INFP peace of mind. So it gives you, puts you in this process where you feel, to a sense, good about yourself and your situation and who you are and what you do. You feel good about yourself, just in a say, just the way you are. You accept yourself. You find yourself in this position of accepting yourself and the world around you, finding harmony, finding peace of mind, finding a good state of just making and uh, turning the world into the way you want it to be. You know, we all are trying to constantly shape the world according to our values. And uh, for you, this just means shaping yourself the way you want to be, living in tune with your purpose, being the person you want to be, acting with the way you want to be, doing what you want to do. As 9FP, what gives you peace of mind is just knowing that I've been myself, I've done what I'm meant to do, I've done and been the person I want to be, I've been true to my purpose, I've thought about who I am, I've reflected on myself, I've gotten to know myself, and then I've thought about this, and then I've decided to act in a way that will make me proud and happy and at peace with myself. So introverted feeling gives, just like introverted intuition, some kind of stability 
that you need to combat anxiety. The more you can tune in and know yourself as an INFP, the more stability you feel. Often what tends to happen when INFPs come into the MBTI is they go from being anxious because, uh, yeah, they are not society's recipe for the successful person. They are not that the rich guy who owns flashy cars and drives around and uh, has everything and has so much material stuff. They are the people that are and have richness in themselves in the sense of understanding themselves, having gained some kind of wisdom or insight into their own personality, into their own needs. And in this way, having richness because you are and you know yourself, you know you're living the way you want to live to be happy. Intuition and perceiving and feeling and perceiving is the primary source of relaxation for an INFP. You know, when you get into that position where you've thought about the situation, you've prepared yourself for anything that could happen, you've responded honestly and authentically to the situation, you've said what you've needed to say, you have put it all out there, you shared everything that was on your mind. When you are in that situation as 9FP, you can truly relax. You find yourself just relaxing. You find yourself just feeling, feeling good. Feeling like a weight is off your shoulders. The more you engage in intuition and perceiving, the more you engage in feeling and perceiving, the more you feel weight has been lifted from your shoulders. So what happens here is, uh, well, the message here is, if you feel there is a lot of weight on your shoulders, if you feel there is a lot of fear in you, if you feel like there is a lot of anxiety in you, if you feel there is a lot of shame in you, what you need to ask yourself is, have I been honest? Why am I ashamed? Is it because I've... And the answer is often, I have not been honest enough. I'm ashamed because I've not been myself enough. I'm ashamed because I haven't sp spoken enough, out enough. I've been thinking of speaking out. I've been thinking of sharing my mind. I've been thinking of being honest because that's very important to me as an INFP. But I haven't been doing it because, yeah, I've been afraid, I guess. And uh, here is um, the simple thing. Fear is always bigger before we do something than after we did it. Often what happens after we did it is we feel relaxation, we feel courage, we feel brave. Often when I get on a roller coaster, which is very difficult for me, uh, it's uh, when I'm on it all my fears go away so when you're as an INFP finding yourself in a situation where there's not a lot of energy often a simple answer is there's not a lot of intuition energy comes from intuition the more you can harness intuition in your daily life the more intuitive the more interested the more energized you will be and often the thing is we are afraid of expressing and going into our hobbies and interests because we are afraid that other people will think they are boring. We are afraid of sharing what's on our mind. We are shared of, uh, afraid of sharing our inner thoughts, of expressing how we're thinking about something or speaking out about our original point of view because we think other people will dismiss it as stupid or boring. But the thing is, and this is a good dumb rule that a friend of mine taught me, you are interesting because you are interested. Even when you're talking to the most sensing sensor in the whole wide universe, as long as you are very interested in what you're talking about, they are going to be at least a little bit interested too. The more interested you can allow yourself to be in something, the more interested other people can, will be for you. When you're not allowing yourself to be interested in something, and you start sharing it, but you also dismiss it, and then you say, oh, it's kind of boring, <laughs> the less interested other people are going to be. So often the lesson tends to be, don't avoid intuition, don't hold it back, because when you hold it back, other people find it more boring. <laughs> when you find yourself lacking a sense of meaning in your life, you don't know why you're doing what you do, you don't know what you want to do with your life, you don't know if, what your purpose is, that's the time when you need to tar start introspecting with yourself and just write down honest thoughts, just sit by yourself, ask yourself questions and answer every question honestly. What do I feel? What am I going through? What do I want? Do I like my current job? Do I like where I am right now? What don't I like? What is it I dislike about it? What could I like more? Is there something that... Uh, what uh, did, Was I happier before with what I did, used to do? Was there something that made me happy about it? You know, just go through these questions 
ask yourself smart questions. A lot of people ask themselves stupid questions. Stupid questions are shallow questions. When you ask yourself, should I do it, yes or no? It's a stupid question. You need to reframe, reframe, reframe. So what that means is, what reframing means is just finding the right way to look at something, finding the right perspective to understand something from. And with introverted intuition, you're going to be able to do that like a master. So thanks everybody for tuning in to this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.